In this video, we're going to be going through a conceptual discussion of the forces acting on a rider on a Ferris wheel. In this diagram, I have the Ferris wheel, and here is the rider on the Ferris wheel, and I've shown that rider when he is at the top of his motion, and also when he is at the bottom of his motion. As a first step, I'd like for us to draw in the forces acting on the rider when he is at the top of the motion, and also the forces acting on the rider when he is at the bottom of the motion. So here, I would invite you to pause the video, draw in the forces acting on the rider when he's at the top, draw in the forces acting on the rider when he's at the bottom, and then once you've given that a shot, rejoin the video. So for both positions here and here, we have a gravitational force pointing down. And then also for both positions, we have a normal force that the seat exerts on the rider pointing upward. In the force diagrams that I drew, I drew the normal force vectors the same length, but are those normal force vectors really equally strong? Well, we're gonna do a bit more analysis and then even an experiment to see if that's the case. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and with the video pause, put in the acceleration vector of the rider when he is at the top of the motion, and also put in the acceleration vector of the rider when he is at the bottom of the motion. Assume here that the angular velocity of the rider is constant throughout, so he is never getting faster or slower, just moving in the circle always at the same speed. Once you've had a chance to draw in those acceleration vectors, then rejoin the video. We've already seen in some of the earlier videos in this module that if we have an object which is moving in a circle at constant speed, then the acceleration vector of that object points towards the center of the circle. That means that when the rider is at the bottom here, his acceleration vector will point up, and when the rider is at the top, his acceleration vector will point down. So I'm going to draw those in now. Now that we have drawn in the acceleration vectors, we're getting closer to being able to answer the original question. Is the normal forcer stronger down here, stronger up here, or are both of these normal force vectors equally strong? So here's the additional piece that you need to think about. Remember Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion says that the vector sum of all forces acting on an object equals the mass of the object times the acceleration vector. Keeping Newton's second law of motion in mind, ask yourself, down here at the bottom, is the normal force vector stronger than the gravitational force vector or weaker than the gravitational force vector? And ask yourself the same question for the top of the motion. If you think that one of the normal force vectors is stronger than the gravitational force vector, then modify that picture so that the normal force vector at that location is drawn a little longer. And if you think that the normal force vector at one of the locations is weaker than the gravitational force vector, then modify that figure so that the normal force vector is drawn a little bit shorter. Have a shot at that and then rejoin the video. Okay. So at this point, I hope that you've thought about where the normal force vector might be stronger than the gravitational force and where it might be weaker than the gravitational force. Now, I'm not gonna give you the answer to this quite yet. I want you to look at your figure and ask yourself, is the normal force vector stronger at the bottom of the motion, or is the normal force vector stronger at the top of the motion? Once you've thought about that question carefully, there's an experiment I'd like you to try, but please only try the experiment after you've thought through carefully where the normal force vector is actually going to be strong. Here's the experiment. Take a heavy object and balance it on your fingertips. Then with the heavy object balanced on your fingertips, move the object in a circle. When you do this experiment, I promise you, you will be able to experience for yourself where the normal force vector is stronger, whether it is stronger at the bottom of the motion or whether it is stronger at the top of the motion. If you are able to accurately predict the results of the experiment, then good job. 
If you did the experiment and it did not give you the result you expected, I would encourage you to go back through your reasoning and try and figure out where it may have gone wrong. If you still can't figure out where your reasoning might have gone wrong, I would encourage you to reach out to me and ask, and we can go through the reasoning together in person.